everybody, Dave here, Syndicated Pipe Club time once again, and as always, I have Greg the Badger Piper with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Uh, I'm doing quite well, Supreme Leader. How are you? Well, I am co-Supreme Leader now, if you really want to know. Oh, really? Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> was, was there a coup? Oh, I'm part of it. It's all right. I knew it, I knew it was coming. I was just thinking it was going to happen right after I had the throne to myself. In case you guys are wondering what the heck we're talking about, I am part of the Flashcraft server, which is uh, put on through the podcast formerly known as Flash TV Talk, now just TV Talk, and we are doing uh, a PvP mini series until. Um, whenever the new update releases for Minecraft, which sh should be coming up pretty soon from my understandings, because we're getting into the pre-release snapshots now, so I'd say likely end of the month, you know, just before Christmas, just in time, you know, for all those new gaming systems to go out and have Minecraft downloaded on them by the kiddies. Yes. Marketing. If they, if people can find them. That's the other thing, yeah. But um, there's people out there like me who have it on PC. There are people out there with, you know, current systems that already have the game. So, right, right. Still, you got holidays coming up. There's going to be people wanting to play. Yeah. Uh, I saw a picture of uh, somebody posted that a, a scalper posted where it was like uh, they bought every PS5 that a store had. And it was like all just, uh, all of them were just lined up uh, in the room. And it was just like this wall of, uh, I mean, not a huge wall, probably like about the size behind me, but it was just boxes and boxes of PS5s. And I'm just like, you know, like. Yeah, that's I'm, just I'm disgusting. All, yeah, like I'm all for, like I am 100% a capitalist and everything, but like there's, I also have a sense of fairness. And, uh, which, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't be the most, uh, you're successful. not going to be a very successful capitalist with a sense of fairness. Well, with, with certain things, uh, like, uh, but, but with that, like, that's just like, uh, uh, well, I guess I won't go for anything that would get towards, uh, an explicit tag, but, uh, that's a D move. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Very, very much so. But back to uh, the explanation of Supreme Leader and whatnot. Um, the storyline of Earth 2, since we were, you know, taking a DC tact, is uh, Brainiac attacked the planet and released a contingent, uh, and we, did, we, we went and fought Brainiac, who of course was somebody playing, one of, the, one of our, our people playing Brainiac. And, uh, he released two withers on the planet when we defeated him from digitizing the world, and it destroyed Central City. Ah. Uh. So, the short version is, one of our guys was trapped in the future, we got him back, he's also the evil overlord or supreme leader of the, uh, of the game, and the PvP What If style miniseries that we're doing is um, the throne's up for grabs. Like, we're in the apocalypse. So, everything goes. <laughs> so, the game started last week, uh, two weeks ago, recording time. So, by the time you see this, about a month ago. And the throne has changed hands one, two, three, four, five, six times in that month. Wow. That's uh that's pretty active. Let's see, so I'll let's see. Knight got it, Will got it, and then Bo got it, and then Fox got it, and then I got it, and then the Alliance got it, which was is myself, Knight and Snow. So that's where we're at. If you want to watch the videos, you can go to uh, 
the the TV the the TV Talk YouTube page, and you can see Bo York's uh, take on them. It's his server, and if you want to watch mine, you can you know links below. Yes, it's all there. And other other flash crafters stream and whatnot. So yeah, I'll, well, I think I can find the. I, I, we have their links centrally located. I'll. I'll throw them in just in case you want to go and check it out when they're streaming sometime over on Twitch. Yeah, no, and that's uh, that's fun. Like, uh, I'm always hesitant to play like online games and stuff, but uh, you know, after my experience with Dark Souls and and some of the fun with that, like, uh, I I do like the kind of like lore making and everything that comes with uh, playing with a group of friends and creating uh, those kind of moments. Or ironically enough, a group of podcasters. Mm -hmm. Because that's mostly what it is. Flash TV Talk, Legends TV Talk, Star Wars TV Talk. Need I say more? That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. We should get off the gaming subject before this becomes a gaming show instead of the show about the Defector, I want to say. The deserter. Ah, Same thing. (laughs) Yeah, but first, uh, what are you smoking tonight? Tonight, I am smoking some uh, Baker Street USA. This is Four Noggins' take on that blend. And I moved the camera, so I goofed up on placing the pipe in in the shot. In my Savinelli Root Briar billiard. Very nice. Felt like English today. Yeah. Two days ago, I mean last week, um, it was it was aromatic. Yes, quite. What about you, Greg? What do you got there? You got a you got a bent pipe, but that's about all I can tell about it from here. Yes, well, uh, I am smoking act- also an English blend uh, in my Peterson pipe here, uh, my Peterson 01, which is just a wonderful shape, uh, classic Peterson look, um, but uh, it is uh, C&D's uh, Constellation. That's a nice little English blend. Yeah. So, nice. uh, you know, it's very, it's very uh, <laughs> not to go on weather talk, but it's really chilly tonight. Um, so I thought, uh, it would be a good night for an English and, uh, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm almost done with it. And when I am done with it, I will be switching to, uh, uh, Cobb with, uh, Sam Gowith's, uh, Kindle cream flake, hmm. uh, Kindle cream. Yeah. So an aromatic, uh, uh not an aromatic, a Lakeland. Well, maybe I'll join you in a Lakeland with my second pipe. I got some Stonehenge here, so if we make it that far, I think yeah. I'll have that. But yeah, so so we were uh, we have watched an Avatar episode, and uh, I know it <laughs> seems like is... forever, right, people? Yes, <laughs> and uh, it's like we it's talk about everything the... else and just use Avatar as filler, right? <laughs> and but. Which is a shame because it, it is a good episode. It is. It's a good um, show. But, uh, that's why we picked it. Yeah. But it's uh, the army. It's Ar- the army runaway. That's the title of the episode, and uh, we're the army disjoiner. And uh, it's an interesting one because we actually get to meet a uh, good firebender. Uh, actually, uh, two. Uh, friendly people from the Fire Nation and uh, a friendly, per se, uh, firebender. Yes, we are talking about Zhang Zhang the Deserter. I can remember it there, but not the title of the episode. Whatever. Well, actually, you remembered the more difficult part because I can remember his name. I knew that it was a... Uh, Names I don't have a problem with, unless they're a title of a show, apparently. Uh, Zhang Zhang. Or, uh, 
I would have got if I couldn't remember it. Uh, I was going to go JoJo. Oh well, you could have go could have gone Bing Bong, the imaginary friend. <laughs> so Any, do you have a uh, anyhow? Oh. So uh, yeah, with this episode, uh, they uh, they start off in a uh, uh, was it a Fire Nation? It, it wasn't. It was like a Earth Nation place, right? No, I think they were passing through Fire Nation territory. Mm. It could it could have been one of those uh, mixed uh, mixed towns that you hear of, you hear of like for, yeah. for the af- you know the time in between Avatar: The Last Airbender and the, the Legend Legend of Korra. Mm. Yeah, because um, we know there were there were towns during the during the during the Fire Nation's war that they sieged in the Earth Kingdom and transferred their flag to. So it could have been one of them. They could have still been in the Earth Kingdom, but been in a Fire Nation town. Right. So yeah. it was a Fire Nation town at the very least. Which kingdom it is in? Questionable. Yeah. But they no, were it, they're it, in the middle of a festival. Yeah. And it makes more sense that it was a Fire Nation uh, town anyway, because the, the puppet show had uh, um, the... Um, the Fire Lord. Fire Lord uh, destroying a... Uh, Earthbender. Yes. But uh, uh, I, I enjoyed the, the town segment. Uh, you know, you had some uh, nice room for comedy with uh, the masks. Yeah, and, uh, that's great. With, uh, <laughs> you know, Sokka not being happy to be there and... Uh, him getting the happy mask at first and then uh and getting and then Aang wearing the unhappy mask and uh Katara switching the switching them and everything. A very nice uh comedy there. Again, I appreciate the the gags and the comedy that uh they they do in this show. Well, you know, yeah, it's they're not, great. yeah, and it's not overly silly, it's just uh you know pretty pretty goofy uh lighthearted stuff yeah this is the kind of thing that you'd see in a you'd have seen in like a, a commedia dell'arte thing back in back in the 1500s when they were doing that where mm-hmm. you know you, you, i could so see somebody them putting on masks and, and when the one character looking back and forth like a katara did and then switching it like <laughs> thank you grade 12 drama class yeah <laughs> um I won't go on a tangent there just uh for all the all the people out there uh look up the mystery science theater skit uh no theater and uh there's a, a pretty funny uh joke uh, a pretty funny skit on there um anyway uh and then then you had like the pepper stuff with with uh Sokka mm, and uh flaming fireflakes. It's hot. Flaming fireflakes. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> you know, for a character oh, who oh. turns out to be so well rounded in the end, he sure starts starts out pretty dumb, doesn't he? Oh, for sure. But uh I mean I guess uh, I have to imagine that uh, at times it, it's tough to give Sokka meaningful things to do. Well, sure. Uh, In the first season, for sure, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, the the story is mainly focused on Aang at this point. And then, uh, but, and, and at the same time, too, you have uh, Katara and, and her stuff and her developing her powers, which we... Uh, get to see again today uh in, in today's episode but uh yeah it's uh you know and he's he's very likable uh but definitely he has the unfortunate difficulty of uh having to play the the goof uh for uh, for the other two the the foil on a Rather side than, note, oh. have you seen the uh, 
Netflix show, The Dragon Prince? No, but I did buy the, I bought the book that uh, the show is based on, and it is in my queue. Oh, good. Because the main character, uh, the prince, basically, there, it's a story revolving around two princes. Mm-hmm. Um, without giving anything away, I can tell you who voiced um, basically the main prince that we were following the development for. Same guy that voices Sokka. Oh, nice. Good. I like him. And uh, it is hilarious. Late in the late, late in the third season, I think it is, because there's I, I hear there's supposed to be more coming down the pipe. But late in the third season, there's this this one scene where they're getting somebody to help help them out, and this 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 person has like one of these staves, like like a wizard would have or something like that. Yeah, and it's got two attachments on it that look kind of like boomerangs. And you know, there's there's him and uh, one the one other character are sitting there, and you see him look over at the staff and look back to the action. And then he looks over at the staff again and looks back. And the girl that's with him goes, "What's wrong?" And you know, he that's why this time he's walked over to the thing and he's taken off one of the things. He looks right at it and goes, "Boomerang." <laughs> that's awesome. Nice little uh, call, uh, uh, homage. It always comes back, even in a different show. Yes. Uh, so, ultimately, uh, you know, they, they don't stay here too long because no, no. they get into a bit of trouble. Because uh, Katara is put on, uh, is used for a... Uh, uh, show for uh firebender kind of like doing different kind of tricks and everything and it looks like there's uh going to be an attack on her uh well that the trick is going to go wrong and it's going to hurt katara and uh ang jumps up onto stage and uh uses his uh bending uh, air bending to uh so basically uh that basically caused the thing to explode into the fireworks and stuff that it was going to do, or, uh, you know, the confetti, uh, which reveals that he's there. And of course, uh, since earlier in the, earlier in the episode, we saw some wanted posters with him, you know, immediately they go, that's the avatar, get him. And, uh, you know, as, two, as you do, yeah. you, you, you're a bunch of, uh, fire nation soldiers. Why not attack the 12 year old boy? That's right. And, uh, yeah, ultimately it, uh, there's a fight, but, uh, there's somebody that we see kind of moving around in the, in the background and, uh, comes to their rescue. And I believe, is it, is his name Chewy? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think it's C H U Y. Yeah, it might be Chewy. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But basically, uh, they run into a uh, deserter of the Fire Nation that has some explosives with him. And they, the four of them team up and manage to uh, ev evade the guards and escape the city and into freedom. And uh, so we get our, well, one of our first real uh, kind of like friendly Fire Nation people since uh, the one uh, temple caretaker from uh, the episode with uh, where Aang gets his vision. Right, from the two-parter Winter Solstice episodes. Yes. And, and of course, I'm, you know, since we're always kind of seeing, you know, the Fire Nation as the bad guys and as the antagonists, you know, other than the, you know, I mean, we can tell that, uh, you know, Uncle I Iroh isn't a bad person. And he's, he seems to be like a very, you know, you know, to, maybe not necessarily with his past or anything, but we see that he's, you know, 
the kindness in him and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then and then we see, you know, occasional shades of gray from Zuko here. Yeah. And uh and, and I I like that. I like the fact that uh, you know, they're showing good people, you know, from from the Fire Nation. It's not always a evil evil people. Yeah, it is a good thing to show that these are just people. Right. And there's some good, some bad. I mean, the average Fire Nation citizen is just living their normal workaday lives when when all right. this is happening. It's funny right. because the... you don't think about it usually, and I'm only think of, thinking about it now because uh, I just recently recorded a couple episodes of the Bad Batch review we're doing on Star Wars TV Talk, and it came up that you really, because they're, uh, during the Bad Batch, you know, they're trying to humanize the clones and whatnot, mm-hmm. and, and you really you really have to stop and think that these clones are being uh, are being humanized, and it makes you think more about what was going on during those things, and like, and looking at Luke destroying the Death Star, how many of those people on the Death Star were just you know doing their normal thing? Like just there's nothing wrong with them. They're just attaches or whatever, just living their normal lives. Right. But it gives you perspective. It does. And uh so we so we get and and two, uh it, you know, true, it's not like the, the villagers in, in the town were all like wringing their hands going, <laughs> we will commit evil today. You know, that if you uh didn't really necessarily know they were, you know, from the Fire Nation or anything. Like, they were just normal people. Yeah, and most of those normal people didn't even try to even block the way when uh, the soldiers are yelling out, hey, it's the Avatar, get him! Right. It's not like they just went, let's rush the stage and get this bum. They just were normal people. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll just let the authorities handle it. What do I really have to do with it? Uh, so the so the group uh, afterwards they uh, are camp and uh, Chewie gives them his history about how uh, he is the second person to ever defect uh, and desert uh, the Fire Nation and uh, uh, the army, uh, but that his hero is Zhang Zhang, who was uh, a general or an admiral from. Uh, the Fire Nation and uh, grew disillusioned with them and uh, deserted himself. Yes, yes, he, he was lived. very high ranked. Yes, with a, a very uh, high ranking student, uh, as we'll come to find. And uh, so he and he's on his way to uh, join him, and offers uh, Aang and the gang a chance to come with him. And this uh, excites Aang because this could be his firebending teacher. Right. At the time, it would seem like his one and only shot at learning firebending because, well, at this particular point in the series, no firebender worth their salt would really want to teach him. Right. But yeah, that's a that was a fun scene, you know. They get captured by they they get stopped by the woods woodsman and they sit there going, Oh yeah, Lee here is a really good friend, right Lee? Shut up. John John told you not to go find the Avatar. Uh and so uh so they get to uh the area that John John's uh living in and uh it's you know they are they do a good job of always making sure you know the path to you know the desired outcome isn't easy and uh and, and this is what what really uh makes this episode for me is this portion because uh, with all the training uh mm-hmm. because at first Zhang Zhang won't uh won't train Aang. He doesn't know water bending or earth bending, and 
because of that, he uh, says Aang doesn't have the discipline needed for firebending. And I, I like the fact that uh, they go into, he, he goes into why later, why yeah, yeah. he is so, um, and yeah, really the, this whole episode, there, there's so much that I like about it uh, because it's so uh, plot heavy. I think, uh, well, you know, it just, it goes so much into like the, the lore and uh, of this world. And, and it all, it's all very logical because fire is dangerous and, and everything. And uh, if you don't have a good, control of your abilities you are a, a danger to to people and uh and Zhang and, and Zhang Zhang does a really uh like that when he's telling Aang no he he's doing it like a very smart job of it but then then we get this really cool uh moment where he all of a sudden it's not Aang there it's Avatar Roku yes and uh, you sit here on you tell me I'm too weak to master these I've done it before and I need to do it again which you know is essentially true it's a little out of order but in the situation Aang's facing I don't think out of order is the wrong way to go right Because really, we we see we've seen it so much through through the season one so far that Aang is just naturally talented at bending, regardless mm -hmm. of being the Avatar. Because anything that Katara has showed him and the, what they've and anything they've learned from and picked up on the way through water bending scrolls or whatever. They've both picked it up relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And Aang more so. He's got a lot of raw talent that just needs the focus. And which is Aang's Achilles heel in this episode because he, he kind of wants to rush things with, with learning. And uh, unfortunately for him, this is a uh, a bending practice that requires a lot of patience. Right. Something that at this point in time, Ang does not have an abundance. I think I have tobacco well, jars yeah. here that have more patience than him. Yes. Which, uh, I mean... It's it makes sense. He's under a <laughs> immense time crunch, and uh, for him to <laughs> uh, be stuck in that, I I know I would be freaking out. One of those things. Yeah, I the avatars before me had years to master the bending disciplines. I have to do it in one. You need to teach me now. That's the general gist of Aang's position. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he uh, he he gets frustrated, and at one point, after hearing the story of Zhang Zhang's other student that had Aang's type of potential, he relents and says, "Okay, I will." Try pay. I'll, I'll try to be patient. I'll, I'll I'll submit to your teaching, and you know you get you get breathing and epic things and and whatnot. And um, Ang of course, being twelve and Ang doesn't uh, quite grasp the situation he's in because the, the scene that I'm thinking of is the one where they're all at the water and Sokka's further furthest down the river he's just sitting there fishing and Katara's practicing her bending 
And when Yang, Yang's starting to goof off, John goes, look at your friend. She's over there doing her doing her bending, concentrating on what what she's doing. And then he points at Sokka and goes, even that oaf over there knows to keep his mouth shut. Hey. Yeah, I, again, uh, great, uh, great Sokka moment. But that leads up to John John giving him a leaf to keep uh, from burning up, and Ang, of course, doesn't do it. He turns it into fire. And immediately starts goofing around with it, doing fancy tricks and replicates what the, uh, what he literally replicates what he saw once with the unintended side effect of burning Katara's hands. Yes. Which, uh, yeah, like the, like the way that she acted from now, I don't remember if, uh, I've seen anyone else really get burned from, uh, fire bending, but, uh, it, it seems to really, uh, hurt her. Yeah. Cause really, this is the first person we've seen actually burnt by firebending. And we've seen the results of somebody getting burnt in firebending. Talking, of course, about Prince Zuko and his scar. Yeah. And one would have to imagine it must be fairly hot when uh, it's sitting there in their hand. Mm hmm. So. The type of burn she sustained would probably be about second degree burns, if I remember my first aid correctly. Mm. And yeah, that's that's significant. So like, you got some temperature going on there. And uh, it turns out that uh, as she's run off and down by the water, dips her hands in the water. I'm assuming just to cool them off and relieve the pain oh, on a previously unknown skill um, manifests itself here and she finds out she has the ability to heal which uh, Zhang Zhang is actually there uh, and kind of observes her, do observes her doing that and uh, talks to her about it uh, and, and I like the scene you know we I like the fact that, uh, you know, we have this other bender, uh, you know, from a different element than, than Katara kind of like talking to her and giving her advice and, and you know, speaking to her as, a, you know, a teacher to, you know, someone that's learning. And uh, it's just these little moments that, uh, that I, I quite enjoy. Yeah, and it's here also that we find out that the, uh, from Zhang Zhang, that the level that Katara is performing this practice at is almost a master level. So, like, it's foreshadowing how powerful she is in her own right. Right, she may not uh, be as quick as Aang in picking up her abilities, but, uh, you know, we all learn at uh, different levels and uh, for some people things just come naturally to them but uh, when they encounter roadblocks they, they tend to get frustrated because they're not used to the struggle whereas someone that kind of has to take more time in learning something it uh, you know it all they, they handle everything you know with that same kind of patience mm -hmm. But during all this, a familiar face has been uh, tracking down Aang. Admiral Zhao is coming down the river right about this point. Yes. And Jung Jung no. sends, uh, sends Katara off, makes a wall of fire. She gets away and gets to Aang and, and Sokka and tells them what's going on and that Jung Jung stayed behind so they could get away. And he goes, nah, I gotta go save him at the very least. I gotta go help him. 
Yeah. And then that'll but, catch oh. up. Yeah, but I, I do like too in this um before I think this is before this, um Engs, you know, was really shaken about accidentally hurting Katara. And afterwards he you know goes to you know the the hut and that's where Katara finds him and uh he essentially doesn't want anything to do with firebending because now he understands uh kind of what Zhang Zhang was trying to uh warn him about with with the power of firebending but uh it's Katara that uh encourages him to keep pursuing it and to, to not give up and uh that he needs to uh that he still needs to do it um but it it definitely leaves him with a uh you know, you know a good lesson of uh you know not to treat the you know fire bending you know so uh uh, lackadaisically, like he does, say with like uh, airbending, where he's able to kind of show off more. Yeah. And ultimately, the lesson he learns will help him in this showdown with uh, with uh, Zhao. Yeah, because uh, Ang arrives at uh, at the river just in time to hear Zhao addressing Zhang Zhang before he disappears with the rest of his group and uh, call him my former master. He goes, you were Zhang Zhang's student? And then <clears throat> a small, you know, one basically one-sided conversation happens and they start fighting and Aang realizes that the story that Zhang Zhang was telling him earlier about this other student he had with Aang's type of potential that just wanted to learn firebending for the power of it was Zhang Zhang, because, no, no, Zhao, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, Aang realizes that Zhao has no self control and that he can win this fight without even firing a shot. Yes, and so uh, Aang essentially becomes the ultimate dodge tank and moves around uh, while Zhao is just throwing everything he has at him. And there, it's a, this cool kind of like set piece fight on three connected Fire Nation boats. And, uh, you know, they're jumping from boat to boat and uh, Aang is just taunting him, comparing him to Zuko, that Zuko's better than him and other things to get underneath his skin. And so he's just really going after uh, Aang until finally he has Aang, uh, they're on the third ship, and uh, Aang essentially says, well, I, like, I've already won the fight. And he's like, what? How is that possible? You haven't even thrown a, thrown a blow. And Aang just goes, no, but you have, and points to the one side, and Zhao looks and sees that he's burnt up all the boats because he has had no self-control. So game over. And that, uh, and that really fits, too, with uh, Aang's... Uh, kind of fighting style. He's letting his opponents essentially uh, cre create their own doom. Uh, you know, Aang is much more defensive, uh, more about dodging than, uh, I mean, he's definitely able to throw a punch, but uh, it definitely fits his uh, style with this battle. Yeah, and that basically leads us to the end of the episode where we get some more 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 comedy from the team of the Golden Trio. 
Yes. Because uh, during the fight, uh, Aang himself got burned by a couple of the shots that that Zhao fired off, and Katara demonstrates her healing ability by healing those wounds for him. And Sokka's sitting there going, how long have you known how to do that? So she goes, well, I guess I've always known instinctually. And then, then this is what we get. Gee, thanks for all the help over the, all the healing over the years. And he goes on and lists like three or four different things that happened that she could have healed up for him. And my favorite, though, is, and what about that time I had two fish hooks in my thumb? And goes, two fish hooks? And Katara says, yeah, he decided it would be a good idea to take the one fish hook out with another fish hook. Uh, hope he had a tetanus shot. <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> but, you know, overall, this was a really good episode. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Uh, and I also like the, the fact that they um, Chewie goes back to the camp and realizes he's been abandoned. Hey, come on, uh, guys. Where are you? It's so funny. <laughs> Which, you know, considering how helpful he was uh, for the group, it, it does seem a little too bad that they, they, they left him. But overall, like, uh, yeah, like, I, I like this episode a lot. Uh, you know, you know, we're, we're learning more about, uh, uh, bending and uh especially kind of like the things related to fire bending and uh it just it, it adds more to the world uh, of avatar absolutely it does i don't think this was a favorite episode of mine but it was definitely a good one regardless mm-hmm no, it's a solid one. Like, yeah, it's not a favorite, but uh, it. Uh, if I didn't know anything about the show or the future, or anything like it, it's a important one with with uh, just world building. Oh, absolutely. But all that being said, I think it's time to call it quits for the night. So, should you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can always follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the things. The The link to all my links is in the description down below. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper, as well as Instagram at the Badger Piper. And you can always send us an email and at time at gmail.com. And I've been saving this for the end of the episode. We did actually get an email to reverse flash time for a change. I can actually have something to read. Just got to open it up here. Just give me a moment to get it up on the phone. It'll be quicker this time, people. I promise because I already have everything in. I just got to switch to the right account. And plus, there's the magic of editing. No, that's not going to happen. It's all going to be here. Okay. I'm excited. Uh, uh, I hope that's a good question that uh, we can answer about Avatar or even uh, maybe even The Flash. Yeah, maybe. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. All right. Let's see here. We've been trying to reach you concerning your vehicle's extended warranty. You should have received notice in the mail about your car's warranty eligibility. Since we've not gotten a response, this will be the final courtesy before we close your file. <sighs> I think it's okay if we uh, just delete that one. Yeah, I think so. But for anyone who seriously wants to send us an email, reverse flash time at gmail.com. And everybody, thanks for watching. We wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Good night.